day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is volts per hertz control for motor drives. Our objective is to examine volts per hertz behavior of a generic motor drive. We'll learn that this control method influences motor behavior when a motor is operated at speeds below the base frequency. This lecture is predicated on the assumption that viewers watch the Motor Drives lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet, or only dimly recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. Additionally, it is presumed the viewer has a general understanding of AC circuit analysis. Before we begin, let's establish the definition of two operational frequencies available to a motor drive, base and maximum frequency. Base frequency is the frequency of the fixed voltage supply network and that frequency at which a regular motor is intended to operate. Base frequency in the United States is 60 Hz, whereas base frequency in the EU is 50 Hz. Given a motor with two pole pairs per phase operated at a fixed 60 Hz base frequency, this motor's nominal rotational speed would be fixed to 1800 RPM. Maximum frequency, in contrast, is the maximum frequency which a motor drive can output. This value is often user customizable and depending upon construction, different motor drives may be limited to different maximum frequencies. For example, consider a motor drive operated in the US limited to a maximum frequency of 100 Hz. However, the default maximum frequency is set to 60 Hz. In this default scenario, base frequency is 60 Hz, as is maximum frequency. Output frequency is therefore variant from 0 to 60 Hz. If this motor drive was paired with a two pole pair per phase motor, this motor would therefore be operational inside a nominal range of 0 to 1800 RPM. If however a technician changed the default maximum frequency setting to the permissible maximum of 100 Hz, the base frequency would still be 60 Hz, however the maximum would now be 100 Hz. Output frequency is now therefore variant from 0 to 100 Hz. If this motor drive was paired with a two pole pair per phase motor, this motor would now be operational inside a nominal range of 0 to 3000 RPM. These two definitions having been established, let's continue with our discussion of volts per hertz control. As you are no doubt aware, motor drives are power electronics devices that vary the torque and speed of a motor under their direction by varying the supplied voltage magnitude and frequency. This ability to vary both the voltage magnitude and frequency directly lends itself to speed control, as well as soft starts and soft stops. Motor drives, among their many abilities, often include the ability to ramp up and down applied voltage magnitude and frequency over user-customizable time periods and patterns, thereby allowing controlled acceleration and deceleration of the motor in applied load, as well as a dramatic reduction of inrush current. We'll deal with the specifics of acceleration and deceleration events in later lectures. However, we need at least a primer on the subject to understand how volts per hertz control influences operation of the motor at conditions below the base frequency. Electromechanical reduced voltage starting methods like primary resistor reduced voltage starters, part winding reduced voltage starters, and Y-start delta run reduced voltage starters, and solid state soft starters, all examined at the Big Bad Tech channel, kind of yield the same result. Being the controlled acceleration and deceleration of the motor in applied load and reduction of inrush current, however they do so, as the title reduced voltage starter implies, only by varying one quantity, namely voltage, and leaving frequency unchanged. Voltage not only influences current draw, but also affects the ability of a motor to develop torque. And despite frequency being fixed, it takes time for a motor started at reduced voltage and reduced starting torque to come up to speed. These types of soft starts and stops can be used to limit undesirable abrupt movement of the driven load that may have a large static inertia of friction. These more primitive reduced voltage starting methods, while effective and inexpensive, are primitive and not without their idiosyncrasies. As one especially egregious example of behavior that prohibits their inclusion in polite society, consider the performance of a Y-start delta run reduced voltage starter. Recall that a Y-start delta run reduced voltage starter starts the motor in a Y configuration at full voltage. Then, after a period of controlled acceleration, the Y configuration is momentarily broken and the motor windings briefly de-energized before being reconfigured into delta at full voltage for the run state. The momentary open transition is often characterized by an undesirable spike in current. More sophisticated means of soft starts and soft stops exist. One might be tempted in oblivion motor drive employs the exact opposite method of a reduced voltage starter and keeps voltage fixed 
and various only applied frequency to control acceleration and deceleration of the motor and applied load and reduce inrush current, but this is most assuredly not the case. The fundamental problem with varying frequency only and keeping voltage fixed is due to inductive reactance or impedance being a function of excitation frequency. This next section assumes the viewer is familiar with reactance and impedance calculations, and if you aren't, just go with it. Motor windings can be viewed as a small resistor in series with an inductor. The resistive portion of a winding is not dependent upon excitation frequency. However, the reactance of the inductive portion of a winding is a direct function of frequency. Inductive reactance, X of L, equals 2 pi FL. Note the resistance and inductance value of a motor at rest is not indicative of its true nature while in operation since a counter electromotive force, CEMF, is developed due to generator action of a moving wire inside a magnetic field. For those necessitating a review of CEMF, please revisit the Electromagnetic Interaction Lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech Channel. While experiencing full voltage, let's say 120 volts, across each winding, at the base operational frequency, let's say 60 Hz, a motor experiencing rated load draws full load current. Full load current is limited by both the resistive portion, the CEMF generated by the generator action, and importantly, the full inductive reactance at the operational frequency. This combined oppositional effect is what keeps rated current draw to a reasonable value when the at-rest resistance of a motor's windings would suggest otherwise. This ideal scenario breaks down when an AC source with a reduced excitation frequency and the same voltage magnitude is applied to the motor windings. Assuming the same 120 volt magnitude across each winding at one-tenth the base frequency or 6 Hz is applied, the source not only experiences one-tenth the inductive reactance, but also one-tenth the CEMF because the generator action is weaker at lower speeds. In this case, the source effectively sees only the small resistive opposition and current spikes. The motor quickly enters overload conditions or straight up bursts into flames. In summary, given fixed voltage magnitude at low frequency, opposition is too low and current goes way too high. The obvious solution to this problem is to vary not only excitation frequency, but also applied voltage magnitude, such as volts per hertz control. Volts per hertz control proportionally lowers applied voltage at excitation frequencies below the base frequency. At the base frequency and beyond, up to maximum, full voltage is applied. In summary, given low voltage magnitude at low frequency, the current stays low. When excitation frequency is increased, inductive reactance and CEMF increase, therefore opposition also increases, allowing increased voltage to be applied still keeping current inside the intended operational range. A basic graph of volts per hertz control is typically linear from zero to the base frequency, although as we'll soon learn, this isn't always the case and sometimes application specific volts per hertz profiles exist. This basic linear volts per hertz profile for a generic motor drive applies zero volts at zero hertz and assuming a 60 hertz base frequency, full voltage at 60 hertz. If one was to dial the excitation frequency down to half the base frequency, or 30 Hz, applied voltage would also be proportionally reduced to 50%. Beyond the base frequency, motor drives typically flatline applied voltage at 100% up to the maximum frequency. Linear means of volts per Hz control is not the only volts per Hz profile available. For example, consider a reduced torque application where the volts per Hz profile is for lack of a better descriptive term a concave quadratic. At the base frequency and up to maximum full voltage is still applied. However, for excitation frequency conditions below the base frequency, less voltage is applied than the previous linear volts per hertz method. Such a volts per hertz profile could be used for an application that really needs a gentle start. Depending upon the features incorporated in a particular motor drive, other application specific volts per hertz profiles may exist. Consider this dual slope increased torque or torque boost profile where applied voltage increases at a steeper slope up to a certain transition frequency beyond which the slope decreases. As previously upon reaching the base frequency, full voltage is applied. Such a volts per hertz profile could be useful for a load with a large initial static inertia or friction, let's say yanking your lazy lab partner off the couch. 
This dual slope volts per hertz profile has a notable knee defined by a point which I'm calling the boost frequency. As implied by the title, voltages boost at the boost frequency. The amount of boost voltage and the boost frequency value can be expressed directly or as a percentage above the normally linear applied voltage in base frequency. Both these values are often user adjustable. For example, consider a motor drive with a base frequency of 60 Hz, a maximum frequency of 100 Hz, making use of 120 volt line to neutral, 208 volt line to line three phase AC, using a dual slope increased torque profile with a motor frequency is 30% of base frequency and boost voltage is plus 20% above normal linearly applied voltage. In this scenario, the boost frequency is 30% of 60 Hz or 18 Hz. This calculation is simple enough. Boost voltage takes a little bit more figuring. Given the typical linear volts per hertz profile, a frequency of 30% of base frequency would ordinarily experience an applied voltage of 30% of full voltage. However, we're boosting it by an additional plus 20%. In this case, applied voltage would be 30 plus 20 or 50% of full voltage for a value of 60 volts line to neutral, 104 volts line to line at the boost frequency. Between 0 Hz and the boost frequency, applied voltage is linear. As is between boost frequency and base frequency, it's just that they have different slopes. Hence the title, dual slope volts per hertz profile. For this current configuration, an excitation frequency of 9 Hz would most likely experience 25% of full voltage, and an excitation frequency of 39 Hz, midway between 18 and 60 Hz, would most likely experience 75% of full voltage, or 90 volts line to neutral, 156 volts line to line. More complicated volts per hertz profiles may exist depending upon the features incorporated by a particular manufacturer. For example, consider this dual slope combination of a linear volts per hertz profile and a concave quadratic for special reduced torque applications. This volts per hertz profile is linear between 0 hertz and a certain transition frequency, beyond which it's concave quadratic up to the base frequency, beyond which it flatlines at 100%. Again, the complexity of volts per hertz profiles can range from the simplest fixed linear profiles defined by a base frequency only or an extremely application-specific curve depending upon the functionality offered by a specific motor drive. All right, that's really about it for volts per hertz control. However, before we bring this lecture to a close, let me make a brief comment about units directly related to an upcoming lecture on acceleration and deceleration profiles and ramp times. Volts per hertz profiles, as implied by their titles, are graphs of applied voltage as a function of frequency. As I alluded to during the introduction, motor drives can perform soft starts and soft stops by varying both applied voltage and excitation frequency over time. Note the dramatic emphasis I'm placing on the qualities voltage, frequency, and time. This suggests a third dimension needs to be added to our analysis. This may initially seem overly complicated for two-dimensional thinkers. However, it's actually pretty easy if you just use two separate graphs. For example, consider a motor drive with a simple linear volts per hertz profile up to the base frequency, and another plot where excitation frequency is ramped to 100% of the base frequency over an adjustable acceleration time of let's say 10 seconds. Assuming a 60 hertz base frequency, this means when excitation frequency is ramped from 0 to 60 hertz over 10 seconds, voltage is also ramped from 0 to 100% over the same 10 second period. At 5 seconds into the ramp up event, excitation frequency is 30 Hz and applied voltage is 50%. When the ramp up event finishes at 10 seconds, excitation frequency flatlines at 60 Hz, as does applied voltage at 100%. This method is a little bit more complicated when you're using a more complicated volts per Hz profile, and as we'll learn, a more complicated acceleration or deceleration profile, however it's still easy if you use two graphs. Given a dual slope torque boost volts per hertz profile with our previously established values of a plus 20% boost at 18 hertz, and the same linear acceleration profile where excitation frequency is ramped to 100% of the base frequency over an adjustable acceleration time of 10 seconds, we can calculate applied voltage and excitation frequency at specific times. For example, if it takes 3 seconds to ramp up from 0 to 18 hertz, 
takes 3 seconds for voltage to go from 0 to 50%. It then takes the remaining 7 seconds for excitation frequency to go from 18 to 60 Hz, at the same time applied voltage goes from 50 to 100%. Like I said, we'll examine acceleration and deceleration ramp rates and profiles in later lectures. In conclusion, this lecture took a brief look at volts per hertz control for generic motor drives. We define base and maximum frequency. We learn motor drives not only vary excitation frequency, but also applied voltage for excitation frequencies below the base frequency. Additionally, we examples simple linear volts per hertz profiles and more advanced quadratic, dual slope, and special purpose volts per hertz profiles for reduced or increased torque applications. Finally, we previewed how volts per hertz profile must be used in combination with frequency as a function of time plot during acceleration and deceleration events. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.